Okay. Well, I'd like to say first, the question uh, for me tonight speaking to you is not how you should vote. Uh, what I'd like to talk about is really how should movement activists and leaders be involved during this election period. And when we talk about that, for most of us to whom the Republicans are not a choice, the Democrats are really the only party at issue here. That's in part because the Green and Socialist parties are, in this election, I don't think very significant. We don't have a great candidate such as Ralph Nader was uh, in a previous election when he was the expression of the global justice movement. Um, I think it goes without saying, people are aware that there's great disappointment in Barack Obama as President of the United States, uh, really in the continuing troops uh, in uh, various countries and uh, so on, the, the, the economic situation, the job uh, situation, which remains terrible, uh, housing, immigration environment. Uh, the Obama campaign, you know, had this uh, slogan at the beginning of hope and change, tremendous energy, and yet once Obama was uh, elected, we saw almost nothing from the social movements. It completely disoriented and, and demobilized the social movements, uh, which in, uh, for example, the anti-war movement virtually disappeared. The notion was, leave it to Obama. Um, but it's not that Obama has failed us. I don't think we should have that point of view. Obama has done a great job for the people he works for, which are the uh, big banks, the insurance companies, the corporations. He is a perfect president in representing them. Um, the, so the, people, the real question, I think, comes down to people say, well, wouldn't the Republicans uh, be worse? That's really the issue. And so the question, it seems to me, though, is, uh, is it worth it to try to defeat the Republicans by working for the Democrats if we do that at the cost of our movement? Is it worth it to defeat the Republicans and not be working on our movements? Because I don't think you can do both. I think it's a great contradiction. I've been very involved in the Occupy movement, so let me just say that, for example, in the Occupy movement, we criticize money in politics. How could I be out uh, talking about how we have to end the power of money in politics and supporting Obama, who will be receiving tens of millions of dollars from insurance companies, banks, oil companies, lawyers, uh, and, uh, and many, many wealthy people, and who has created now a super PAC uh, imitating the Republicans, the same kind of uh, bad example of money in politics. Um, we're against war. How could I support Obama when I know that we still are going to have, at the end of this period, uh, getting out of Iraq, we're going to have um, uh, 18,000 troops in Iraq who are mostly mercenaries. Uh, that's not really getting out of Iraq. We're going to have, we have 110,000 troops in Afghanistan. Obama is sending drones to bomb Pakistan. Uh, so is, how can you be saying, well, I'm in this movement, we're fighting against the war, but I'm going to go out and work for this president? It's quite contradictory. Um, we in Occupy are fighting, fighting for jobs, education, housing, uh, for all of these concerns of the American people. And yet Obama, while he has given lip service to being for these things, has not taken the actions necessary, even when he had the majority in Congress, uh, to create a jobs program, to put Americans to work. The government should become the last employer of, uh, the employer of last resort when there's no other employer. That hasn't happened. Obama has not stopped the foreclosures. We have a tremendous number of foreclosures. They've been a million a year. The big question is if we do this, we will be, if we go and work on the Obama campaign rather than building our movements, we will see that it will disorient and demobilize us as it, uh, as it did in the past.